everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to another live class. I am excited for this one because we are using all palette knives, um, but before that, I'm sorry I'm a few minutes late. I was putting on my traceable and then I was just like staring at it, envisioning how I was gonna teach it. And then I just got like lost in that thought process and then realized it was like 3.03. I was like, oh, I need to go live. So sorry that I'm a few minutes late. Um, I usually try to be pretty on time. Um, but yeah, that was, that was just a weird, weird thought. But anyways. Um, yeah, I'm really excited for this one. If you've never used a palette knife for paintings, you're in for a treat. You're probably in for also a what the heck is going on, I don't know what I'm doing type of feeling and that is completely normal and totally okay. Um, I think we've all been there. I think my first, yeah, my very, very first class of like te teaching from a picture was actually a palette knife class. Um, and that was the owl back in uh, 2020 in October. And it came out really, really cute. And so if you want more practice with the palette knife, I have a ton of palette knife classes. I think I might have a playlist. If not, I will go and make one after this class. But um, yeah, it, it's so much fun. So if you've never done it, welcome. And I'm glad you're here. So let's go ahead and go over some supplies and some quick announcements, and then we will get straight to painting. Uh, theoretically, this one shouldn't take too long um, because typically when you're using palette knives, you use a lot of paint and it's a little bit more abstract. And so you're not trying to get all of that uh, fine, minute details. And so they typically tend to be a little bit faster, but we'll see. Um, yeah, let's go over supplies. <clears throat> so today, and throughout this whole month, um, I've been using the Fredericks Red Label um, canvases. And on that note, I have one week left for our giveaway. It's on my Facebook. I'll go in more detail um, when I do announcements, but um, you can get a free pack of canvases. So thank you for uh, sponsoring that Fredericks. And that's really awesome that they are gonna be able to send that to you guys. Um, it's one winner and it, it is only US only, which is kind of a bummer, but um, I'm really happy that they uh, sent or are, are willing to send these out to you guys, okay? Uh, so yeah, so I'm using an 11 by 14 canvas um, and, but you can use whatever canvas you have, obviously. Um, if you have a panel or if you have a bigger canvas, if you are using a bigger canvas, I would say that it's probably going to take longer than it will take me to paint because you have more real estate to do. So just keep that in mind. Um, in terms of brushes, we're not really going to be using brushes today. Um, I will probably be using, because I want most of the texture to be on the horse, I will probably use a filbert like a large filbert um you can also use a flat brush for the background color it is mainly white um but i'm just gonna be slapping on some color in the back and then calling it good we're not gonna you know make sure it's all blended or anything like that but i will be using a large brush for just um that background portion um and then 
for our brushes, we're actually gonna be using palette knives. So I have an array of palette knives. Um, all of the supplies that I use are in the link, uh, links below, um, as well as on my Amazon shop. If you just look up um, Samantha Anderson Artist Amazon shop, if you just Google it, you'll probably find it. Um, there's also links in the description below if you want any of the supplies that I specifically use. Um, so this is a, a kit that I think these are actually different ones from different kits that I've gotten from over the years, but um, there is a kit on there that has all of these. And I'm not sure which ones I'll be using, um, but I use these probably uh, probably more often than not. Um, this one, the small one, I use the most because I use uh, I mix my colors with all of that for like every single class. So this I use every single class. It's very, very helpful. And then I have a larger one. I have a fatter one that's got like kind of a rounded edge and then I have a longer one and this one will be nice to get nice straight lines if we're using it for the hair or anything like that um, big open areas you'll want to use the longer one um, if you don't have a palette knife and you still want to paint with us and maybe you you know forgot that we were using palette knives um, feel free to use like other things you can use spatulas you can use uh, I've heard of people using butter knives or using uh, like credit cards and things like that. So like get creative, use what you have. Um, it's not as convenient as having a nice little palette knife kit, um, but you can use other tools uh, for a class like this. Um, and then obviously I have water, but obviously I don't really intend to use it all that much because most of it um, I'll just be wiping off with a paper towel. That being said, you might want to have a couple extra on hand uh, so that you can use it to wipe off your palette knife kind of as we go. Um, that's pretty much it. Let's go over the colors real fast. And then let's see making sure okay um for the colors we have i'm using full body acrylics from hippie crafters um these are black and white and then i have a raw umber a yellow and an orange and then i do have a blue in here mine's phthalo blue you could use ultramarine blue there's just a very cool of like uh overall like not not theme but like in this paintings there are like the whites are more on the cooler side rather than the warmer side so you can use your blue you can keep it out totally up to you um if you want more of like cool grays then you could add just the slightest amount of blue and it'll give you that kind of cool gray um, effect so totally up to you on the color scheme if you have a horse specifically that you want to try to paint Maybe you have a horse of your own or you're doing this for a friend, feel free to replicate uh, that horse as well, okay? Um, I do have a traceable for this. Now, I will be going over basic shapes of this um, and uh, just basic shapes overall, but if you don't want to worry about shapes and getting proportions right and things like that, feel free. Uh, I have a link posted in the chat, I have a link posted, um, I will have a link posted down below, um, pinned above, all those things, um, as well as on my Facebook. Um, it is available to all patrons, and Patreon is just a way to support me. Um, and um, kind of, it's like giving a tip, it's $5, so it's like giving a tip of $5, except you get a traceable in return. Um, some people use it as a way of tipping um, for classes, um, but then you also get traceable. So if you're someone who doesn't really like to draw it out feel free to use a traceable um, otherwise I am going to be going over um, just a few tips on how to get proportions right and stuff like that and I just realized that this needs to come all the way down here okay um, let me go over a little bit of how to draw this and then I'll go over while everybody's finishing that um, I will go over my announcements okay so let's get started so essentially you're gonna to wanna to figure out where your eye is gonna be. Now I placed my eye in the very middle and just above the halfway mark. So if we split this in half, if 
we split it in half, this is where the canvas is. This is half and this is half here. So it's pretty much dead center in the middle from left to right and then it's just above the halfway line. So you're gonna do an almond with it drooping a little bit lower on the bottom than it is the top. Okay, so that's, that's your starting point. Um, now I will say don't worry about drawing too hard on this. Um, obviously when you're first drawing it out, draw it light so that you can erase it if you need to. Um, but we're going on pretty heavy with some paint on this. So you're, all of this is going to be covered up, like 100% covered up. Uh, so don't worry about trying to erase it unless you just want to make it clean so that you know where to put stuff. Then you're going to draw the eye in here more to like the right side. So you're going to leave this space in here. And then you're going to draw almost like a, like a Pac-Man like trying to eat the eye, okay, just a line. And that's just um, on the, the top and the bottom. And I'm just following the curves of the, um, of the eye. Okay, um, I'm gonna come up to the top and about where the eye comes all the way up, that's gonna be my halfway mark. And that's where I'm gonna start that and you're going to end it just um, just before you hit just before you hit the um, the edge of the canvas so you have a bit of a finger so not quite to the corner so so once you do that if you want to put in the hair you can Essentially, the forehead is a little bit straighter. That's where the forehead is, and then the hair kind of comes out. You don't have to do the hair. Um, I kind of put it in just so you can kind of see the flow of it. It kind of comes on either side of the either side of the um, the eye. Um, all of this is going to be covered up, so don't worry about putting in the hair if it's if it doesn't help you figure out where everything is. Um, then don't worry about it. Um, there is an ear up here. That totally rhymed. I sound like Dr. Seuss. Um, there's an ear up here. Um, and it's just kind of coming up. And I, you're just going to put two lines about right there. And then you're just going to add the back of the neck. Okay. So you're going to add the back of the let. And then... Um, Let's see. So yeah, so after you do that and you have that right there, about here, just the general area, it does not have to be precise. Um, it doesn't have to be precise. Uh, is there a question in uh, slide for me? Yes, it was just a few minutes. Yes, yes. Um, I'm glad that it's live um, and I'm not talking to myself. Um, you're gonna go ahead and just draw a circle draw a circle. You don't have to, um, I typically, when I, when I first drew this, I drew a circle and then I drew a, uh, a slightly bigger circle around that. And then you can always erase parts of it. So you do your circle all the way around and then you draw a slightly bigger circle around that. And then you'll be able to erase the parts. Um, what I did is you're going to go straight up to the behind the ear and then going down in like a little um, a little Y like this. And this one comes in the same kind of direction as um, the face. And that's pretty much it. Um, you can you can add any details that you want if you want, but most of these details are gonna get covered up with the first um, with the first, coat of like paint as we kind of go so don't get too detailed don't get caught up on the details because again a lot of this is going to be um, covered up okay um, and then I just added a little uh, the end of it here okay so while you guys are finishing that up I'm going to go over um, a few um, 
a few quick announcements. Um, in my Patreon, we actually just finished this class and I'm really excited about it. We literally finished it yesterday. It's for the highest tier in my Patreon. It's for the Cobalt tier. Uh, so if you want to get more in depth with classes, so these classes are pretty simpler. Um, they have to be done in two hours. I am kind of on a two hour uh, time limit for them. So I can only do classes that I can teach within that two hours. Um, in my Cobalt class, I can spend pretty much as long as I need to. Um, some some take three classes, some take four. If there is five in a class, I could take five. Um, five in a in a uh, month, I could take five classes. Um, but this one took three classes, so it was about uh, maybe three and a half to four hour class, I think, altogether. And this is what we did. We did um, Half Dome in Yosemite. So we did a national park and it was a lot of fun. Um, this one was focused on just creating depth and how to create depth with colors. Um, so if you would like to do this class, it is in my Patreon uh, for the Cobalt tier and above. And yeah, so this one was super, super fun. Uh, I think the, I'm probably the most proud of the water. Um, I love doing water. I stayed away from water for a long time, um, but it just looks so realistic when you just look at the whole thing. Um, it looks very, very, very pretty, and I'm very excited for it. Um, and I'm very excited about how it turned out. So um, that's available in Patreon. The other class that is available in Patreon that we did this month I think I've shared this probably every live class. I'm just really excited about it. Is our elephant. So if you like elephants, if you like um, abstract realism, um, kind of like what we're doing right now, abstract realism, except these colors are much, uh, uh, <laughs> much more fun, um, in my opinion. Um, it was a very fun class. It was a lot easier than I anticipated. It's very forgiving. Like this type of style is a very, very, very forgiving style. Uh, so if you want to give this a try, this is also in my Patreon. Um, under the magenta tier so it's just the ten dollar tier and you get a um a exclusive tutorial every single month um as well as access to like every every class that um i've taught in that so you get like an archive of like 60 uh 50 classes this was the 50th class um for that tier and then um finally the class that we did last week, if you missed it, was this bubble class, which was super fun, super simple. Uh, we used like glasses and things like that to get all the round bubbles. So it's like if you do, if you can't draw a circle, that's totally fine. We just used glasses and it was like super easy, super fun. Um, so make sure you go check that one out. Um, and lastly, I think I just said that, but that was for the classes. Lastly, if you... Um, are not on my Facebook, please go over there and check it out. I have a um, a giveaway from Fredericks going on right now, and I would love you um, all to be a part of it. Um, it is U.S. only, but share it with your U.S. people. <laughs> um, so they're giving away a set of canvases, and if if I may, like these canvases are so nice. I've used the Michael ones. I've used the uh, Hobby Lobby ones, and those are fine. They're 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 fine. They're great. Um, but after using these, I think I used these for the majority of this year, um, because they sent me like a, a huge case of them. Going back to those, I'm just like ah, I I see it now. I feel it now. I can tell it in the stretching and just how sturdy they are and they're they're really good they are worth the price in my opinion um but obviously i understand if people can't buy them but i have a giveaway going on right now go enter and um yeah yeah go do that um okay hopefully y'all are ready to paint Um, I bought a compass when I saw all those different size bubbles. Yeah, a compass would be nice. That would actually, I wonder if I have a compass. I haven't, I haven't used a compass since like college. I mean, I haven't really had use for them since college. Okay, let's go ahead. Yeah, they are, they are cheap. 
I think I might have one though. I I have a hard time getting rid of like art supplies, even if I think I might never use it again. Technically it's math. I think I used it for math, but I also used it for art, so. <laughs> okay, let's get started. We are gonna create some colors. Um, the first thing I'm gonna create is kind of this like white background, and it's pretty much the only thing that we're gonna be painting with our actual brush. So I'm gonna get out some white. Lots of white. Um, a tad bit of brown. And I'm actually going to switch my blue to a ultramarine blue because brown and phthalo blue end up making like a teal color and I don't really want it to be a teal color. Um, so maybe I just won't add brown to it. Um, okay, in that case, I think I'm going to add white, blue, and black instead of brown. And I'll save the brown for these colors. All right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> okay, so I have most of this white. I'm just going to put this off to the side. And I have the tiniest bit of blue. That might be even too much. And a little bit of black. Kind of this cool gray. I think I put like a tiny bit too much color in it. So I'm just going to take some of that out. And mix that with white. Okay, I did end up adding just the tiniest bit of brown to it and I think that kind of helped. Um, so let me just add a little bit more white to my canvas and we'll get going. So I'm just going to add a little tiny bit of that to some white. And I'm just going to use a mixture of these colors that I've created to create the background. You can use a palette knife if you would like to, but I'm just going to roughly um, put on, put it on with my um, large filbert brush. I went ahead and dipped it in the water and then wiped it off so it's not dripping. I'm going to start with my white and lighter gray color at the top. And I'm also going to paint um, this corner as well. Um, keep in mind the contrast. So you do want to make sure that the background um, is lighter over here. It's lighter than your horse. And that it's darker over here. So you want that white horse to be brighter then your, um, just realized my lights turned away. Um, you want your white horse to be brighter than the background. Okay. So as you're working your way down, try to start incorporating that like darker, the darker colors. Go ahead and just put this on here. I'm 
And I'm kind of going to do it in a slightly, I don't want to say messy because like I'm intentionally doing it. Um, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to kind of like not care because this is all going to be, you know. Yeah, it's loose. There we go. Thank you. I'm going to put more over here. All right. So it's kind of like, you know, it's not perfectly blended. You can kind of see um, some light spots, some dark spots. The only thing I'm really being like actually intentional with is that this down here is a little bit on the darker side. Um, so that when I put my white here for like kind of where the sun is hitting it, it will be lighter than the dark, than the background. Um, there's going to be that contrast. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to go ahead and rinse out my brush because that's pretty much all I'm doing with that. Um, now what we're going to do next is kind of a fun thing. I'm just going to use the colors that I have on here and I'm going to use a lot of paint because I have to cover the rest of this in this like whitish paint. So I'm going to use a little bit of this gray that I have, kind of the blue gray. I'm going to add a little bit of brown and a tiny, a little bit more brown and a little bit of my black. And I'm just going to mix this all together. If you're not sure about how much to put, put less than you think it will be. And you can always add more to your white. It's a lot easier to darken your white than it is to brighten up the color with your white. just a little bit more white when I say a little bit I mean like a fourth of what's here all right so now that I'm done mixing Go ahead, take your time. Um, even though this is a live class, if you need to pause it, you can. You'll, you'll then be a little bit behind, um, but you can pause it if you need to. Um, okay, so I've got my color and I'm going to take a larger one. So I'm gonna take this uh, kind of medium to large one and I'm just going to essentially put it everywhere that's like behind essentially just everywhere um, and then um, but when we do get up here um, let me go ahead and make that color so let's make that color first um, apologies I'm gonna take some of this off to the side add more brown to it and more black to it and I'm gonna create a kind of grayed out brown it's still gonna be a light color, but we need some dark contrast up here. Um, it's essentially the shadow underneath um, that the, that the um, main is casting. So I have this little color that I can kind of pull to uh, or pull from. So let me go ahead and grab. So again, that was just the, uh, the white cream color that I just created plus black and brown. All right, so I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna start by adding this on here. And the only parts that I'm gonna be careful about is just like kind of right where, um, right where everything comes together in terms of the, um, the halter. And I'm 
kind of staying away from the eyes a little bit. And if you need to ever like take off a color, like maybe you put a color um, that was too bright, you can either wait for it to dry or you can just mix in like a white or a brighter color. go in with um, my lighter color maybe mix a little bit with white a tad bit of white in here I'm getting on the getting on the lighter side of things So I'm going to go ahead and do a kind of light, light, um, just putting it on very, very lightly up here. And then I'm going to go into this darker color. And play with the angles of your, um, of your brush. Like, don't feel like you need to keep it the same every time. I'm going to go in with some white right above the eye. And then just kind of maybe blend it up a little bit. You can always blend it down. Whenever you're blending, try to use like the tip of it. And you can use small little motions. I'm going to put a little bit of a lighter coat below the eye. And we can we will be able to add texture um, after we are done. Or after it's like dried a little bit more. I'm gonna use a um, a burnt umber kind of give some warmness. to like the shadow up here.
Um, so I'm gonna let most of this dry, I think. I can always come back and add um, more on the top. So I'm just gonna kinda keep going, at least for this section of it. Um, I'm going to make it go over the top. There's a little bit of a darker section right here, so I'm just gonna put that in there. And if you need your brush to assist to like get in any of the um, like the the spots that for some reason it's like not covering up. Like, you're not, like, not allowed to use a brush. It's abstract. You can, you can use whatever you want. Um, but this class is mainly for just to kind of get you out of your comfort zone a little bit. Um, so wherever possible, use a palette knife. And if you feel like you need a little bit of assistance, it's okay. Go ahead and do this spot down here. using the combination of like the different colors, my kind of gray, my white. I think I'm going to use my brush for just the bottom here because honestly I don't need all that paint on the bottom. It's just going to end up sticking to my canvas or to my, um, to my easel. So I'm just kind of following the colors that I see um, in my reference photo. I'm doing kind of the brighter on the, the left side, um, the darker colors underneath here, and then kind of, well, I'm gonna add texture um, when we get back to this section. I'm gonna add a little bit more lighter-ish colors.
um, over here. go ahead and just go over this circle right here I think it's just gonna be easier to put in a circle later than to try to like go around it all A little bit more of like that kind of darker color. Underneath. Here. Well, first time I ever finished before you. Congrats. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to take some of this and do the side. If you do ever use your brush, make sure you rinse it out after you're done because you never know when the next time you're gonna use it and it might be like dried out by the time you get to it. All right, so you can play with the colors. Um, you can leave them how it is. Um, I'm just kind of putting in like what would be like a maybe a little bit of a shadow area underneath like this area and maybe behind what we will put in maybe there's a little bit of a shadow underneath here um, oh and actually I miss going over this
Okay. You know, it probably looks real weird right now. Um, I am going to use my brush for the eye and then I'll add texture with the with um, the palette knife later. I just think that it would be nice to have a little bit more control in such a small area. So I'm going to get out my raw umber and my Mars black. Obviously you can use any black, but that's the black that I have. So I'm going to get out my black and I'm just going to color in this whole area. Now at this point you can tell if it's too big or not big enough. And I'm just going to take a little bit of a gray color and just put it around the bottom. I'm for the most part just kind of dry brushing a little bit. I'm going to take um, either raw umber or um, burnt umber, kind of whatever whatever you want. And you're just going to do a little half dome in here. And I will definitely need to lighten mine, but I'm going to do the rest with my palette knife. So I'm going to use my small palette knife with some raw um, uh, burnt umber and mix a little bit of raw umber in there to make it a little bit cooler. All right, I'm gonna add just a touch of black. Anyways, just play with the play with the colors until you get a medium color that you want to use for the eye. And you can always try out a little bit and then if it's not the color that you want, you can just do more. I think mine needs to be lighter. All right, I'm going to take a little bit and I'm just going to kind of dab it. going in small circles you can always put the the middle of the um, the middle of it like the iris kind of back you can put a little highlight in there if you need to
All right, I think I like that. I'm gonna put a little bit of a white um, kind of waterline-ish. And I just barely put any um, paint on the very, very tip of my uh, palette knife and just it's almost like drawing at that point. All right, now, I don't want to put the eyelashes on until that is uh, pretty much dry. So let's go ahead and work on our straps for our halter. And I'm going to use this brown. I think that's probably essentially uh, use the dark brown for all of the main parts and then you're going to use the uh, burnt umber or a lighter brown you can add your orange and your white to it for like a lighter version um, that for any parts that like have like a highlight on it And remember that the halter sits on top of the face so that um, there is going to be a little bit of an overhang. I need more brown, lots and lots of brown. All right. I'm going to start at the top first because um, I don't want to stick my hands in it. And a, and a trick for getting flat lines is just to have some paint on your um, palette knife and just use the like the flat edge of it go to go right up to your line and then pull in
And for this little part in here, I'm going to be using black. Just trugging along using um, I'm using my small one I probably could use a, a larger one on this but I find I have a, a little bit more control when I'm using my smaller one And if you're watching this class and you're like really lost um, because it's palette knives, if you wanted to, if you're just starting out with palette knives, um, something that you could do to kind of introduce, to kind of like do a slower version of introducing it would be to do an undercoat of all the main colors and then just use a palette knife for the textures um, after it dries and that way you can get kind of used to maybe just using it with a little bit of paint because sometimes when you're using a lot of paint it's hard to kind of regulate where all the paint is on your palette knife if you're not used to it. So if you're struggling with it, which I hope you're not, but if you are, that's totally fine. And I would say it's rather even normal because um, they are a, definitely a different skill set. But I would challenge you even just to make sure that you are kind of like letting go and you're not trying to get that perfect line or that perfect you know uh color or whatever it may be um because that's really hard to achieve in something like this because it is supposed to be more loose um and a little bit more of an abstract -y thing i'm gonna grab a little bit of my yellow Just so I can lighten up a little bit of this. So I'm adding my brown, my yellow, and my white.
put this lighter color on kind of the edge of this one. I'm also going to put it on the edge of this. I know it might be hard to see with the reflection. You might see that it might look like there's a bunch of white spots, um, but it's actually just the reflection of um, the paint popping up. Um, also, beware of your water. If your water's like right next to you, there was um story time. There was one time in a in a Freda tutorial that it was like like it was like the last five minutes of class too, which I guess I was thankful for because I could just finish what I was doing and end class. But it was like the end of class, and I was putting in, oh, it was for my curious cat, curious kitten one. And I was putting in a couple just like details with the palette knife. <laughs> and it was before I was using my ceramic um, cups. I was just using like a plastic like throwaway cup. And I put my hand right in the water and it just like spilled and went all over <laughs> everything <laughs> like <laughs> like my ipad or not i didn't have an ipad at the time but my tablet was on the on the um on the desk and all my paints were just covered in dirty water and i was able to like finish what i was doing because that was like literally the last thing i was doing but i was just like um okay well i guess i'm done with class <laughs> and yeah so beware of your water when you are doing palette knife stuff because you end up putting your hand just like all like all over the place and you just you just never know you know Let's just say I uh, I started using different cups after that. I was like, I don't want, at least if I put it in here, this is not gonna, I have a, um, like a mug, a ceramic mug, that if I stick my hand in it, it's not gonna fall over. Like, there's that. <laughs> Okay, um, let's go ahead and make our yellow color because I want to, I, I want to do a, like two coats of this yellow. Um, so I'm going to make this yellow color kind of like a gold so I have yellow and white and then I'm just gonna put the tiniest bit of brown in here and I'm gonna go even lighter on my white, even more white. And it's okay if the first coat is a little bit darker because we can always add that white um, as, um, as a highlight on it.
you're essentially making um, almost like a grayed out Dijon color. Right, so I have mostly yellow and white with a tiny bit of brown. I used the, the lighter brown, um, so the burnt umber as opposed to the raw umber. And then um, like the like the tiny, tiniest bit of um, of black just to kind of gray it out. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use, well, maybe not. I'm going to use... Okay, I'm gonna use a um, a brush for this portion, but then I'm gonna go back to using my um, my palette knife. Just for this first coat. Um, because I'm I'm going straight on the canvas I want to make sure that I kind of I get all the the canvas that's not covered okay So now I'm going to do the little like rings and I'm just going to go boop and I don't even have to do anything to that. So <laughs> that's so cool. So I did this and then because I pushed a little bit harder on the front end of it, it made it so that I kind of took off that paint and you can see the brown underneath. And so it created like an eyelet all by itself. Like I didn't even need to do anything. Well, that was easy. There, that one didn't come out as well. Probably because I didn't have as much paint on my palette knife. I have a dot and then I'm just going to go boop. And there is one that kind of goes around this one. Okay, I'm gonna go put it around here as well. I remember this is just like the darker parts of it.
it definitely brought my um, my brown up too high here, which is fine. Um, but just that's um why that part kind of looks funny. At least it looks funny to me. But that's because I know how altars and stuff work. Um, okay. So I'm gonna make a lighter version of this now. And I'm just going to put it on in some spots. And the trick is to get it on the tip of it and then just barely touch the canvas. Alright, so once you get that, we're going to let that dry and then come back and put some white highlights on it. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and create our horse hair. Um, so I'm going to get, let's see, I'm going to do, I have most of the dark there. We have the white hair and then it's kind of like an orangey hair too. I'm going to move some of this. Okay. Now I have a little bit more space. I'm going to put the orange right here and I'm going to lighten it up a little bit with some yellow and white. So we have orange, yellow, and white. I am also going to grab some more of the raw, uh, the burnt umber brown. Kind of keep mixing those colors together until you get a fairly light color that you want to do. Um, oh, before we do, actually before we do that, we do need to finish the face. So I'm going to get together uh, I think I'm going to use this other brown that's right here. It's kind of a whitish brown. 
I'm gonna lighten it up just a little bit. And you wanna get just like barely any on your, your palette knife. And if you want, you can do it up here just to practice. But use the texture of the canvas and just barely glide it over. If you get chunks of it, you'll know that it's not very even. And you can play around with just adding a little bit more pressure here and there. gray out a little bit more And if you end up getting a spot that you don't really like, just take your, take a clean brush and you can just kind of wipe it away a little bit. You can blend it in, you can paint over it. I'm just wiping off my brush every time I take some off. You can also wait for it to dry and kind of scratch away out of it a little bit and you can break it up so it's not so um, so it's not so dense see how I'm just I'm just taking my palette knife and I'm kind of just scraping at it so you can kind of just get away with any any large marks that you need to break up just kind of scrape it off a little bit but it does have to be just a little bit dry to do that all right so once you do that now we can take a um, little I'm going to take this long one and 
and you're going to start, I'm going to go ahead and do the orange ones first. And you're going to use the side of it. If you want, you can use a liner brush for this, but if we are sticking with um, the if we are sticking with more of the um, abstract palette knife route, then try your best with the um, palette knife first. And we can always come back and put in more finer details with the um, with a liner brush if we want to, because it's abstract. There's no rules, guys. There's no rules. If you want to use all the things, you can. <laughs> I'm gonna grab some white. Got a couple in there. I think I am going, or maybe I'm gonna use, I'll use a fan brush. We'll see how that goes. Why not? Kind of fun. Um, I am going to need to wait till my orange dries because it's just pulling the orange, which I don't necessarily dislike. It's just not exactly what I had in mind. So while that's all drying, I'm going to use this, um, I'm going to use this, uh, this is a hog bristle fan brush, by the way, um, and I'm going to use some white. And I'm going to Do some texture. Um, I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to grab, I am going to grab a smaller brush so I can at least do the, uh, 
the eyelashes. So I'm gonna grab my fill, my small filbert. And if you want to grab a small round brush or a liner brush, that's fine. I'm comfortable um, with a um, with one of these because I can just turn it to the side. Just make sure you don't cover up all the eye. I'm gonna go ahead and try to put in some of these white hairs just using my filbert brush. Now that that is pretty much done, I'm going to take a liner brush. If you don't have a liner brush set, I would highly recommend getting one. They are so useful and I use them all the time. Um, I don't know what I did without them. Um, you're going to just make sure that whatever paint you're using is just fairly, it's like half and half with water and paint so that it moves on the canvas very easily. And I'm just going to add a bunch of white strands over everything and I'm mainly focusing on like the ends here Because our, our brain will fill in the rest once we have the ends in there. Because if there's a lot of ends, then there must be other hair above it, right? So a lot of times if we just do a little bit of detail, then our brains fills in the rest. And then I am also going to come in here with a brown. I 
because this horse has just a bunch of all sorts of color hair. So I'm going to add some of those dark tones in there. And just by adding those layers, it will help add depth. I'm just going back in with a darker color. And keep in mind that you don't need to do every single stroke from the bottom to top. I'm doing a couple strokes um, at the top, like I'll do a couple here with the brown. And I'm just doing like strokes that are about this big, you know, about a finger's width. And then I'll move to a different section and do the same thing. They don't all need to be connected. Like it's not one long strand. It's all like intermingled with each other. And now with the dark in there, I can come back with some light. and cross some of this. Because again, without the dark, you can't have the light. So now, because there's that dark in there, you can see where I'm putting in the light a little bit more. So if you're having trouble with the light, try putting in some dark and then come back over with your light. I think I'm going to make my mane just a little bit longer.
could probably keep adding hair for like forever. <laughs> it's like a never ending, a never ending thing. Um, but yeah, that is, that's pretty much um, it. Um, I am gonna, oh, I think I have paint on myself. Uh, you can't see it. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> I have so much paint on my hands. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put some um, some white highlight on the metals and then we will be all done so I'm gonna go ahead and just Tiny. Tiny, tiny bit on the top of these guys. Whoop. And there you go. That is pretty much it. Um, I think I might put a couple more white, like pure white hairs out here. Just kind of flicking it out. Is pretty much the end of class thank you so much for joining me this was a lot of fun I hope you enjoyed yourself and you weren't too uh, kind of scared of just kind of letting go it is hard to let go uh, especially if you've never done an abstract painting um, or painted with a palette knife so give yourself a round of applause if you did it um, and if you didn't just do it all right okay uh, thanks again for joining me and I look forward to uh, the next one. The next one I haven't posted yet so stay tuned. Um, I'm really excited for next month. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, if you have not followed me on Facebook that is where I post the majority of my content. Uh, my upcoming classes, polls, Patreon stuff, um, all of it goes to Facebook. So make sure you follow on Facebook. I think I posted a link earlier. If you did do this class, guys, I would love to see it. I love seeing um, you guys' work. It's it's honestly, it really is what um, helps me keep doing this. Like being able to see everybody's paintings, it's like it's literally one of my favorite parts of paint nights in general. So being able to see your paint nights, it really does keep me going. So I'm gonna post a uh, Facebook link to my uh, my 
community right now. Go over there. I am going to be posting this picture uh, within the next 10 minutes and you can just add it to the album and yeah, we'll go from there. I would love to see it. I will see you guys next week for another live tutorial and uh, happy painting.